What's up guys, it's Phil, and it's time for another update. So I am in my freshly cleaned shop. I'm getting ready to start doing some dining table. I am super excited to get started. I've not done some dining tables since Thanksgiving. I've been on built-in mode for a while now, and now I'm back to dining tables, and then right back to built-ins, and then right back to some other weird projects that people are ordering from me. So I've got a lot of crap to do and not a lot of time to do it. So I'm super excited. So for this update, we're gonna talk about some of the dining tables that I do. So the way that I build my dining tables, uh, can be pretty simple and I've got a red oak dining table and I've got a uh uh, yellow pine dining table that is a I mean it's still pine so it's not that high of a grade but it's a slightly better grade than the hardware store stuff that you're gonna get uh, but I've also got like three or four dining tables that are gonna be hardware store studs um, there is a company near me that I usually get my pine from but everything they have right now is wet because it's stored outside and I don't have a very big stock in my uh, finish room that's drying right now so I need to buy stuff that has already been kiln dried bring it here and let it dry for a little while before I actually start using it it's not ideal uh, but these people understand that I'm using cheap grade pine and just milling it down to something slightly better and then making a dining table so that's okay I'm gonna be doing a lot of that so you'll see some of that in this video if you've seen my videos before then you know that I do have a Festool track saw and a Festool Domino XL um, those are extremely important for what I do because the way that I batch out these dining tables, they have to have the mortise and tenons holding them together and keeping that pine nice and straight, keeping everything level and preventing it from twisting or coming apart. It also gives it a little bit more strength in your glue joint. Um, but the breadboard ends is the most important part. So I've got oak pegs to hold those in place. I also wanna make sure that the end of the table and the breadboard end are perfectly flat and straight for each other so that they can just join up the way that they need to on the ends. All of these tables are different styles, so the only thing I can actually batch out right now are the tops, and even one of those tops, one of them's made out of oak and one of them's made out of like two by sixes, so, or four by sixes or three by six, I don't know. Real thick wood that I'm making a, a massive top for. So even those two tables I can't batch out. But these first couple tables I can just batch out the tops and then make different aprons and legs for. Um, so that's gonna be pretty nice. The reason I'm talking about the tools is not to brag about them but to just tell you the significance of using the proper tools when doing woodworking. I have a pretty decent table saw right now. Um, and it is good, it's a cast iron top. That's very important for getting good rips and good cuts. I also switch out my blades regularly, so I'll be switching this out for a ripping blade so that I can get a nice, perfect seam that is really good for gluing, as opposed to using a combination blade that'll leave some swirls. It's not as good for gluing up your tabletops. Add to that the mortise and tenon with the domino, and you've got a nice, strong joint all the way across all of your joints of your tabletop. It's imperative that all of your boards are extremely straight or as close to straight as you can get. I do do not have a jointer as many of you probably don't either but I do have the track saw. The track saw can act as a jointer and if you do it right between the track saw and your table saw you can get really really straight and square boards. Those three tools for me have been extremely important to putting together tables and it's just the way that I choose to do my tabletops. You might not have those tools or the money to buy those tools or access to those tools but um, there are other ways of doing the same thing. Uh, I just choose to do it this way because it's quick, it's easy, it's efficient and in running a business and in making super cheap tables for not a lot of money for people who don't want to pay for stuff, that's the best way to go. So I'm not going to buy a Festool based on selling pine dining tables, but when I need to straighten out some barn wood and make a nice expensive table, it's definitely worth having. So I've got some links in the descriptions below. Um, again, if you want to help support this channel, the best way to do that right now is clicking on the Amazon affiliate links. Anything you buy on there, I get a small percentage uh, for advertising fees. Not like a commission or anything like that, just you know, pennies on the dollar because you clicked on it. So click on those links, shop on Amazon, help support this channel. As you can see, I've got my heated jacket on once again because it is cold out here. I've got a fire going, but the shop is not warm yet, uh, but I'm hoping that with it being a little more open and airy that I'll be able to uh, spread the warmth around a little bit more. 
So I'm gonna get started on these dining tables. I'm gonna try and batch through a couple of table tops today. So let's go to work.
that's the long montage you just watched. I hope you watched. You probably fast forwarded. Check this out. So the reason that you didn't see a whole lot of finished products, if any, in that last little montage is because I didn't finish any projects. Um, I got one dining table done and the customer does not like the legs, does not like the color, even though it's exactly what she ordered, and went ahead and canceled her order. I got the deposit, I've got a table that now I get to try and sell somewhere else. And that's a pain in the butt. The other tables are really close to being finished and I also realized that I did one of them wrong. I actually was supposed to be doing a somewhat square table and I mixed up my measurements and wound up doing all of the boards long ways instead of, you know, across the table like that. Yeah, so the past couple weeks have been completely fruitless. Uh, and on top of not making any money, I went ahead and spent a ton of money. So I got in touch with a guy in South Carolina who had some really awesome tools for sale. Specifically, one of the ones he wanted was this bad boy. So this is a really old sander. It is a dual drum sander, which is something I have been lusting after forever and saw this one. I happened to have the money ready to go uh, and decided I would go ahead and make the trip out there to go get it. Um, it's in really, really good condition. It runs really well. Um, so I've still got to get my shop hooked up with 220 in order to be able to use it, but uh, I'm excited. This thing is going to be great when it's ready to go. Also, you can see uh, in my trailer here, I have a almost brand new Grizzly Dust Collector. Um, he had bought it to use with this machine, and then when he didn't need the machine, he didn't need the Grizzly anymore. So I've got this huge dust collection system that I've been looking for for a while now, plus a bunch of accessories and stuff, and pick that up. Also, I got this baby. So this thing is Awesome. Um, it is an 8 inch joiner. I don't actually know the brand and I don't really care because it works really freaking well. I've cut a bunch of pieces on it. Um, I had to get a bunch of surface rust off and wax it down, but it has turned out amazing. Uh, I just did a tabletop using this thing and it is probably the flattest, cleanest boards that I've ever used. It's better than my planer and better than using the Festool and the table saw as far as the quickness of using it. So there's still gonna be a little bit of a learning curve there because I've never actually used one of these before, but it's huge. It's 52 inches long, it's eight inches wide. This thing is really cool. So whether it's cheap or not, I don't care. It's a jointer. And I picked up the jointer for a hundred bucks. I picked up the dust collection system for a hundred bucks. I'm not gonna tell you what I paid for the sander, but it was way less than the $5,000 that they cost new. In fact, it was about a fifth of that price really less than that. So I got all of this stuff for that money plus the gas to drive out to South Carolina and I spent about 12 hours on the road to have a 15 minute pit stop at somebody's storage unit. So that was interesting. But got these tools in. I'm super stoked to be using them. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up just because I want to keep these things short and I got some tables to build. So um, this is the end of, I guess, part one. Didn't mean for this to be split up, but that's the way it's going to be. So make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. If you're watching this video to this point, you might as well subscribe because it means you're just a glutton for punishment and you enjoy my content. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. If you don't like the video, don't give me a thumbs down because you're just a jerk. And make sure to share this video anywhere that you want to share it. A lot of people like to see this kind of content and I like to put it out. So share it, like it, subscribe, all that jazz. And uh, yeah, guess that's it. See you next time.